Hey y'all, Jamie here. And if you've been following along in my videos, you might know I have had trouble growing summer squash, well, squash of any kind, for probably the last three years due to vine borers. Well, I'm getting more of a harvest. So I've grown lots of crookneck and strikeneck, yellow squashes, zucchini, things like that. I'm not the biggest fan of either. I think I prefer zucchini. But I've only grown one patty pan until this year. So, I want you to know that this recipe is not something I've done before in advance. This is going to be a trial to see how I like it. Because I am not the biggest squash fan, don't hate me. I know, I know people are die hard squash, which is why I grow it. Because I have friends and family who like to eat it. So I want to grow it and share it with them. But we are going to try a recipe today and see how it works out. See if we can convert this not so much squash like or into somebody who loves squash first let's come out here to the garden and get some ingredients this is English thyme I'm gonna try not to drop it and I have harvested off of this a few times but I've got it dried and I figure this might be better fresh. And this time probably isn't going to survive that much longer. Because our heat has set in. And I don't think it's going anywhere. Alright, I've got that much. I'm going to do some. Let's see how much I end up with. Alright, that's how much I got. And we'll have to see if that works good enough. This should be strong since it's fresh. Let's go grab some more. Alright, here we go. We need some rosemary. And my kitchen scissors have disappeared. I'm going to do one more little snid bit because if I have too much, I'll just dry it. But that is rosemary. Homegrown. So it should be full, packed full of flavor. Alright, so we will need squash. You can use either. I'm sure you could substitute for zucchini. And I've got some English thyme. This is fresh. You could use dried. And then rosemary fresh. Again, you can use dried. And then we'll need some sort of spray oil. I'm using extra virgin today because that's what I have. Some salt. And pepper. And as always, my kitchen lighting is horrible. I have one window. One day I'll have to do a tour. As this might be the worst kitchen in America. But for size, that is a big patty pan. You're supposed to pick them smaller than this. So everything's nice and tender. But we had a whole bunch of storms come through and I wasn't able to get out there. So we're just going to wing it and see how it is. I'm probably even going to leave the skin on and we will just see how it goes. These two have been sitting out on my counter for a couple of days. So they need to be used up for before the other two. And I'll probably save the yellow squash for another recipe. Let's get going. All right, let's try to get these things chopped up. Now, I've tried to get y'all set up where y'all have the best lighting possible, but if I have shadows, please forgive me. I think we'll start with this one. It doesn't feel tough, so that's promising. The seeds are getting bigger, so we'll have to see if they're edible as well. I do a lot of trial and error. I think I'm going to just notch this instead of cutting it up a whole lot. And if these seeds are tough, then the chickens will love them. And I have heard that all squash seeds can help deworm your chickens. So that will be a bonus as well. All right, that side looks good. I got fuzzy on it. Let's 
so far it doesn't look too pithy or stringy or anything like that so we might be in luck I think I'm going to cut these I don't know however they get cut how about that maybe like that one inch pieces that might work out for all of them so if you are new here thanks for joining me and if you're not new here I appreciate you coming back and if you don't know I live in Southeast Texas and we like to grow a lot of food so I have a lot of growing on my channel and if you would please let me know in the comments where you're watching from I'm interested to see where everybody's from and don't laugh at my tiny cutting board okay it's cutting board can't help how small it is and I can't help that my bigger ones are in the dishwasher that's kind of part and part <laughs> I'll go and cooking all the time but sometimes your stuff is dirty so you just gotta make do I wonder if these will be like oh, pumpkin seeds that'd be great if it was but they might be chewy so they just might sit on the side of our plate and I've got a 12 year old here, here who will give me an honest review I doubt she'll do it on camera but you know what kids are like they'll tell you the truth whether you want to hear it or not which I honestly don't think is a bad thing why do people ask questions that they don't want the real answer to? Anybody tell me that? That's something I've struggled with my whole life. Is trying to understand that. Y'all wish me luck because I am concerned about liking this. Although I find them incredibly interesting, and I love to grow them, I still do not know if I'm going to like this. So wish me luck. I'm going to get this one chopped up off camera, and I'll meet you back. Alright, y'all. I got that other one all cut up and had to change bowls. I should have known better, but, you know. So, I'm going to get my rosemary chopped up, and you just... Hold one in and pull down. So you, you can just pluck these off or just use it. Usually the tip is a lot more tender. Same thing. Hold where you can and pull down right off of that stem. And I'm going to just pull them extra bits off. And rosemary is strong. I can smell it. It smells lovely. But it is not one of my favorite herbs. So I will use this in moderation. So if you love it, add more. If you're unsure, add a little less. You know what I will add to this that I do love is some garlic powder. I love garlic. And we're going to be using rosemary and thyme so I think garlic would go just fine with that so let me go grab that all right I just have some Sam's granulated garlic I haven't quite mastered making it up growing enough garlic for a year that's a semi new crop for me and I do have some coming in, but there's no way that's going to be enough garlic for me. Alright, that looks good. 
I'm going to just move that out of the way for now, my teeny tiny cutting board. And then go through the process of destemming and picking off the little time. I guess some people probably use this stem and all, but uh, I don't really know about that for me. We're already in a questionable recipe. Why make it more questionable? Also, if you like shorts, if you're into that, shorts instead of longs, as my mother calls them, I do do shorts with just some additional content, so please check those out. And same as always, leave a comment, whatever you like. And if you aren't subscribed yet, please do so. I do a lot of cooking. And I hope to be sharing more of that. Right now I'm sharing a lot of garden content as uh, that's keeping me pretty busy. But I will try to do these more farm to table, which we do not live on a farm. Uh, we have uh, about two, under two acres. So, and some of that is wooded acreage. So you can grow a bulk of what your family eats and help offset your grocery budget even on smaller acreage you just have to be creative but if you haven't seen the ways that we grow please check out my uh, garden tour I think I have one or two on there now if I remember I'll try to link it down there for you I try to keep them short but I do grow a lot and I encourage you to grow a lot as well the more we can grow at home the better it is for us because we know what's in it if you're worried about your pesticides and herbicides and things like that instead of spending so much money buying organic you can do it yourself even if you just start with a few of the ones that they call the dirty vegetables work on your peppers to begin with you know, things like that. Any little steps you make towards betterment of what you eat and grow is going to be good. Alright, let's get started on this. I think I'm going to put the garlic in. And you can add this to taste. This is a substitution from different recipes that I've seen. And I think I will go ahead and add all that time. It's maybe two teaspoons that I have here. And then, should we add all the rosemary? Why not? We can always adjust it next time if we need to. And I do have a video about this little hack as well I think it's a short so check that out on why it's a hack and we do like black pepper so I'm gonna put quite a bit in there I might put a little bit more than that because we don't mind a little spice another change to this would be like uh, Cajun squash and just put some Tony Sasha Rays or something along that lines in here instead of all these herbs and I'll put up uh, probably another two teaspoons of salt and honestly I don't use this a lot I normally would just add some sort of vegetable oil in and stir but I am going to spray this in I will try to link one of the recipes that I looked at. And now there's no way all of that oil and seasoning is everywhere, so use a lidded bowl. And that will help you. Shake everything up. And now we can check it. And that looks good. Might give it a little bit more. I see some garlic stuff extra. But that's a great way to mix things up. 
and let's show you the next step and why this might be extra good. This is a Kasari like all-in-one type of machine. It toast. It has a bagel pizza, bake, roast, air fry, broil, cookies, rotisserie, dehydrate, ferment, and warm setting. And I mainly use the dehydrate setting. I use this machine all the time. So, you know, it's going almost 24-7 this time of year. So I randomly, after a few batches, will just kind of deep clean it. Or if I have something like this that's going to have a lot of strong flavors, and I decide to go ahead and de dehydrate something with mild flavors or a fruit, I will go ahead and deep clean this. That way it doesn't taste. And I do have some fruit bits. I've been doing lots of fruit, but I'm not worried about them taking over my flavor. So I'm going to go ahead and just put these all out here. And we are going to use the air fryer setting today. And it does look really pretty. I wonder if this is going to be similar to roasted vegetables. I do a lot of roasted vegetables around here and my family loves that. But I'm hoping this might maybe get a little crispier or I don't know. But it's worth trying out. And if you have a good way to do squash, aside from frying, I mean, I'm, I'm from the South, y'all. I know all about fried squash and sauteed squash. squash. I've even had uh, relatives make squash and cheese casserole, which I didn't mind too much. We're going to try those seeds and see if they kind of roast up like pumpkin seeds. Trial and error that. But if you have a good recipe that's tried and true or converted some squash hating people, please direct me in the comments on that information. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and give all of these an extra strip. The oil is what should help make it nice and crispy. All right, well, wish me luck. All right, I have it set to 400 degrees for 25 minutes. I will take it out and check it after that. All right, so let's see what this looks like at the 25 minute mark. Jeez, they are roasted. Well, air fried. This one didn't get so brown, so I need to take note to maybe about halfway through put these on top and those on bottom. I'm going to try one of these seeds. Y'all, that is just like a pumpkin seed. Mmm. Let's get this tasted. Okay, I did pick one that's more toasty and has quite a bit of seasoning on it to try out and this is still very hot <laughs> not bad not my favorite but I would do it again especially if I have a bumper crop of squash or just patty pan we've got a lot of flavor I do recommend that garlic that's quite nice I'm gonna get another piece look at that this one's got great color. Sister's definitely not convinced. She's making this face at me right now. I'm kind of convinced. The squash flavor isn't really there. I'm tasting all those seasonings. So we will have to try Mr. Fix It and see what he thinks about it. I think he's going to like it because he does like squash. This is a win. Y'all, sister is very dramatic. And I guess that's a no for her. But you win some, you lose one. At least I can tolerate it. 
and I actually kind of like it, but don't tell nobody. I still will say I hate squash for now, so once I find a few more recipes that I love, then I will say I have converted. But as for now, if you like this type of content, or gardening, or canning, or random projects around our property, please share, hit subscribe, like, leave me a comment, all the good things. Love you, bye-bye!